Hello and welcome. This is Nico Carver from Nebula Photos. This is part 2A in a series on capturing and processing the Dumbbell Nebula. If you haven't watched part one, what you can do is watch the first 22 and a half minutes of part one. And then if you're interested in processing with Cyril and the GNU image manipulation program, then you can switch over to this video after the first 22 and a half minutes of part one. And the big advantage to processing with Cyril and the GNU image manipulation program is that they are both free and they are both completely cross-platform. So they're available on Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. Um, I'm going to be showing this tonight on a Mac. I'm using Mac OS Monterey, which I believe is the current stable release of Mac OS. And I'm on an M1 MacBook Pro. So to download these programs, you're gonna to go to their respective websites and just download the software. So I'll do that here. And just so you're aware, this is these are the current releases as of the time of recording. So for Serial, it's 1.0.3, and for the GNU Image Manipulation Program, it's 2.10.32. They are both easy installs. You just drag and drop into the applications folder. The one thing that can be a little bit tricky in new versions of Mac OS is if I just double click the application serial to open it right now, it might say, this is from a unidentified developer, can't open it, sorry, blah, blah, blah. So all you have to do is right click or control click and choose open from the right click menu and then it will instead say uh, it's downloaded from the internet, but are you sure you want to open it? And you can just say, yes, open. And then it will remember that choice and won't throw any security warnings after that. Okay, so here is Cyril, and this is a full featured astronomical imaging uh, program. We're going to use it for calibration and stacking and registration and all of these kinds of tasks that are normal with deep sky images. The first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is we've already gone over in part one how to organize your data, but just to reemphasize, because this is very important with Cyril, you want everything in one folder. So I have one folder here called M27. And then inside that folder, I have four subfolders, biases, darks, flats, and lights, just like that, all lowercase. That's exactly how we want it. And you, it might throw an error if you don't have it exactly like this. So that's why I'm really re-emphasizing that because that's the most common error that people run into. Oh, and the, the other common error is just not having enough room on your hard drive. So I've put these on an external drive and you can see that external drive has plenty of space, two terabytes, um, but you know, you, you just wanna drive with plenty of extra space for this stacking process because it does use a fair amount of temporary uh, storage. Okay, so let's get going here. The first thing we're gonna do is up here in the upper left, we're gonna change the current working directory. Uh, you can see right now, it shows it right here in the center, it's Nico slash desktop and we wanna change it to M27 on my external drive. So I'm just gonna go into volumes, pick my external drive here, and choose M27. Okay, and you can see I just changed the working directory. You can see it right up here at the top, volumes, 2022, number three, M27. And then we are basically ready to go. We can just click here into scripts, and choose OSC pre-processing. It will say, you're about to use scripts, running automatic scripts is easy, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but it, you, know, you can tweak these things with the manual commands. Uh, I understand all that, I take the risks, uh, and I think the script will work fine for our purposes. So I'm gonna click run script. And off we go. 
Now, this is what you should see. It should give you a console and it should immediately start working, creating you know, a bias uh, master frame and all of this. Um, if you instead just immediately get some kind of error, read the error message, try to un understand it. It will be in English, it, it will make some sense, but don't just uh, you know close the program and give up. If you run into some error message, um, just read it and it will usually tell you what to do. So, you know, like I said, the most common thing is is the directories not being right. Uh, the I mean, the folders, it, the, the next most common thing is just not having enough space for it to complete everything it needs to do. Uh, so anyways, this is now a fairly automatic process. You can occasionally check in on it to make sure it's still going, but it's going to take quite a bit of time because it's doing a bunch of different things. It's going to create our calibration files. It's going to calibrate all the lights. It's going to register all the lights and stack them. And so when it's all done, it will say, you know, process complete, and we can open up our finished uh, stacked and calibrated file. So I'm going to jump ahead to that. Uh, it'll probably on a laptop take a few hours. So I'm just gonna leave this alone and I'll catch up with you when it's all done. Okay, it's finished the whole uh, process of calibrating registration and stacking. We can see it says down here, total execution time, six hours, 17 minutes. Again, I was doing this on a laptop. It would be faster you know, on a, a machine with a better processor or more RAM and that kind of thing. Um, but it will still probably take, you know, hours to do it. Uh, when Once it's finished, it doesn't, you know, it tells you it's finished successfully, but there's no image here yet. You do have to open it. So we just go over here to open in the upper left and click on result.fit, which should now be in your main folder. Okay, and you open it and you don't see anything. It's, it looks black and that is completely normal. Uh, this is not stretched. If we look down here at the bottom of the interface in the middle, we can see we're in the linear uh, display mode. That means it's sort of how the computer sees the file, but it's not that useful as a preview. So what we can do is we can change it to auto stretch. And now we can see there's M27 right here. Now it's still black and white. What is going on there? Well, this is just the red channel. If I switch to the green channel, you can see it looks like that. There's the blue channel and there's the RGB uh, preview again. Um, now, why is it so green? Um, this is a very normal thing with uh, DSLRs when you're working you know, with an astro specific uh, processing software like Serial or DSS or PixInsight. It's it's nothing to be worried about. It just means that the the color channels are a little bit off and there's, you know, two green pixels for every one red and one blue in a DSLR camera. So uh, green can often dominate like this. So that's completely normal. Don't worry about it. Okay, and the first thing that I'm going to do under the image processing menu is a background extraction. The way this works is you can either let it set samples using the generate button or you can set samples yourself, which are just going to, it's going to use to make a model for the background. Um, and then it's going to either divide or subtract that background. That's the correction. I usually start with division. Uh, and since there might be some nastiness right on the edge of this, I'm going to go in a little bit from the edge, but I'm going to try to get sort of one sample without too many stars in each corner. You know, one up here, one over there, and definitely one in the center. Okay, and then I'll click Compute Background. One nice thing with Serial is you can always see what it's doing over here in the console. So I can see it's now it extracted this background model from the red channel. Now it's now it's done it from the green channel and then it'll do it from the blue channel. Okay, and then next let's do a color calibration. And specifically, I'm going to try a photometric color calibration first. 
Um, I find that this usually works better if you can get it to work. So I'm gonna type in M27 and let it find, you know, this object, which it did, and it put in the coordinates. Okay, then let's try get metadata from image for the pixel size and the focal distance, and it got those exactly right just from reading, you know, the metadata from the image. You do want to double check this. I know for a fact these are right, uh, but you know, double check, make sure that it, it got them right. Don't just assume. But again, this is to know uh, how big a field to plate solve. Um, so it has the coordinates. It has our metadata from the image. Okay, let's go ahead and try it. Click OK. Okay, and I can see it did work. You can see the uh, over here, the green channel got a lot more normal looking, not so bright. And down here on the console, it says photometric color calibration applied. So I can close this process now and let's look at our RGB image again. And now it looks a lot better, right? Um, you know, we still have the nice green uh, dumbbell nebula, but the background and the star color all looks a lot more normal now. So uh, next thing that we can do is stretch the image because what we're seeing now again is the auto stretch. But if I go back to linear, it's actually still like this. So let's now apply a permanent stretch through the image processing menu. We'll go down to histogram transformation. And if we want to try just applying the auto stretch, you can click that um, and apply it. Or if you'd rather uh, you know, reset it, you can do the stretching manually. So I'll just show stretching manually because I find it sort of fun to see the image uh, come alive. So each time I click apply, I'm applying a little stretch and it can be fun just to sort of watch it uh, get brighter and decide at what point uh, it's bright enough for you. Now, I'm just taking this middle slider and have been moving it over to the left. Now, eventually, when you keep doing that, you'll see that the background, the, the dark part of the image, becomes more sort of gray. Um, so to change the shadows, we can take uh, this shadow slider, the one on the left, and move that into the right. And basically this process of taking the midtones or highlight slider, moving those to the left, taking the shadow slider, moving it to the right, is going to stretch out the histogram. It's going to make this wider um, as, we, as we stretch out those, those midtones. To zoom in in uh, Cyril, you hold down the command key, or I guess that would be the control key on Windows, um, and just scroll. Uh, and then you can scroll back out. So I'm just going to scroll in a little bit here. You can see there is a little bit of trailing on the stars. Uh, we can try to fix that in the GNU image manipulation program. But otherwise, I think this looks really good. You definitely get the nice dumbbell uh, shape to the nebula. And I really like all of the, the colors we're seeing so far. Starfield looks good. Um, so, I mean, if I was just going for a you know, a fairly conservative edit uh, that's just fairly naturalistic, I could just stop right here. Um, maybe I would crop to taste, um, but otherwise I think this looks really nice. Um, if you do want to crop in Cyril, I'll just show that. Uh, all you do is just click on one of the color channels, doesn't matter which one, and then just click and drag out how you want to crop. And you can change this crop box. You can, you know, grab an edge. Uh, or if your mouse is in the center, you can move the whole crop box around. It does give a nice little uh, center spot there. So if I wanted to center M27, I could. Okay, once you've drawn out a crop box that you like and you've adjusted it, just right click anywhere on the screen and you'll get a nice right click menu. Um, there's other cool things in here, but I'll just mention crop since that's what we're talking about. And if you choose crop here, it will crop to whatever that selection you just drew out is. 
There's, of course, a lot of other um, things we can do in here. So if you just wanted to finish in Cyril, um, you know, and wanted to apply a little bit of uh, color saturation, you can do that here. And, you know, it, it makes the colors a little bit more saturated, which can often look good. When you are ready to save this, either for display on the web or bringing it into another program like I'm going to, instead of clicking save there, that just saves the current fits file, click on this next button over um, where it says save the current image in a different name. And when you do that, you can then save in different formats. So you can save as a JPEG if you're, or a PNG if you're putting it on the web, or you could save as a TIFF file uh, for bringing it into Photoshop or, or Affinity or GNU image manipulation program or whatever, whatever else you'd like. So I'm gonna save it as a TIFF file. I'll call it m 27 serialtiff and click save and then it gives you some different options here um, you can leave it in 32-bit uh, especially if you're bringing it into GNU image manipulation program which supports 32-bit it or you can also uh, put it down into 16-bit at this point you know because we've already done the stretching I think it's fine to go down to 16-bit I wouldn't go down to 8-bit um, and definitely leave compression on none. Okay, let's go ahead and save. And then I'm just gonna open GNU Image Manipulation Program. Again, I'm on version uh, 2.10 here. We'll go File Open and open that m 27 file. There we go. And you know, this already looks really good. Um, so there's not that much I really wanna do in here. The one thing I do wanna show though, is how to get rid of this little bit of star trailing that we're seeing. So the way to do that is we're gonna first duplicate this layer. So you can just right click on it and choose duplicate layer. And then we want to make what's called a star mask. So the way to do that is go to the select menu, go to select by color, and then click in the center of a few stars holding down shift. And you can see as I'm doing this, we see the selection outline so we can see it's selecting lots of stars. I want to go after a few of the fainter stars here too. Okay, that looks pretty good. Um, however, uh, it's not a perfect selection yet. We want to modify it a little bit. So let's go back to the select menu and let's grow this selection by, let's say two pixels. Ah, okay, so now you can see it's circling the stars quite a bit better, maybe a little bit too much. So now let's feather it. So let's go to select feather and feather by one pixel. Okay, I'm going to switch to what's called a quick mask. Um, in the GNU image manipulation program, you can get to that mode of working by pressing shift Q. And so, and it's a, it's a toggle. So if I press shift Q again, it goes back to the marching ants mode, uh, but shift Q and then what you'll see is everything, you know, that isn't red is what you have selected right now. And the one thing that I want to fix is it's selected a bit of our dumbbell nebula in addition to the stars. So I'm going to just grab a uh, brush and let's change the size of that brush just a little bit, make it a little smaller. Perfect. And I'm just going to paint with black where I don't want it to 
select, which is the nebula, because right, what we're trying to do is just make a star mask where it only is selecting the stars. Okay, good enough. Let's go back to marching ants mode, shift Q. Okay, and then I want to turn this selection into a layer mask. So I'll right click on the layer, choose add layer mask, and choose selection. And you can see then what we had selected, the stars are what it turned into the layer mask. Okay, so we can now deselect. So I'm just going to go to select none. Okay, we're almost done. I know this is a little bit uh, complicated, but it is worth it, I think, uh, to get rounder stars. And again, I, I did this purposefully, if you didn't watch part one yet, um, because I wanted to show this method. So I exposed a little bit too long to get these trailed stars because I wanted to show how to fix them uh, with this method. Okay, so anyways, we have the layer mask. Again, this is the star mask. Let's click back onto the normal image and we're gonna change the um, blending mode here to darken only, darken only. Okay, and it says darken only, nothing seems to have happened. But now what we're going to do is we're going to nudge this layer to make the stars round. I'm going to click onto the canvas here, and then I'm going to use my arrow keys. I'm going to press down a couple key, uh, a couple strokes, and to the right, uh, just one stroke. Okay, and that's it. Let me show you before, after, before, after, and this is a and you know, you know, zoomed in like this, and maybe it doesn't look. Uh, perfect, but if I zoom out a little bit, that's much better. It's it's not only making the stars um, less prominent because they're not as trailed, but it's also literally sort of making them rounder. Um, and the way that this works is we're basically just taking the stars and we're darkening the part that is trailed with this blending mode. So it's a very nice technique if you have slightly trailed stars. You could have slightly trailed stars for a number of reasons. Even if you're tracking, maybe something went wrong. Um, and so this is a really nice way to fix that. I think really the only thing I do at this point is it just looks a little bit uh, low contrast. So maybe I just go layer, new from visible, adds a new visible layer there. And on that new visible layer, I'll go into color and curves and I'm just going to reset my black point here by just dragging over the shadow slider. Okay, save in GNU image manipulation program. If you wanna come back to this, just do file save and you can save it as an XCF file um, or if you want to save it for the web, do file export as and you can then just type in the format you want. So I'll do m27.jpg export. I'll do full quality. So um, this again is uh, completely untracked, no, no star tracker, just a fixed tripod showing you what you can do on a planetary nebula, in this case the Dumbbell Nebula, using free software. I think it looks really excellent. Uh, really nice star color, uh, nice even background, the nebula pops, we fixed the star trailing. So that's it for this one. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, until next time, this has been Nico Carver, Clear Skies.